Welcome to Bed Crime Stories Podcast. I'm your host, T. If you like all things true crime, if you like it delivered in a peaceful, tranquil manner, if you like it clear and concise without drama, then I highly recommend you subscribe. And if you like what you hear, please smash the like button. It's a free way you can help. And now, without further ado, let's dig in. Well, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. I hope you guys are having a great day and all is well with you. The energy festival that Jay Slater attended seems to have five key ingredients. One, heavy pounding bass music. Two, pulsing strobe lighting. Three, young people moving to the beat and looking to party. Four, S-E-X, can't say that, YouTube doesn't like that word. And five, abundance of illicit drugs. A reporter from The Sun went to the first NRG rave since Jay Slater died, and he said that drugs were rife. In fact, within 30 minutes of arriving, the reporter was approached by a dealer offering an array of goods. According to this reporter, the rave was full of people experimenting with drug use, and throughout the night, he and his friends were continually pressured to buy drugs. One raver that the reporter met ended up in a remote villa with strangers he'd just met that night sounds just like what we've been led to believe happened to Jay Slater. This raver ended up having to walk down a gravelly mountain path the next day when taxis he called refused to come and get him there. He said that Uber drivers refused to drive there because it was too hot. I'm wondering if this is why Jay didn't take an Uber. Maybe he did try to call for an Uber and was refused. Now this other raver got back to his accommodations safely, but he admitted that it was a risk leaving the festival with strangers. However, he also said he'd do it again because he had such a good time. I think a lot of us have taken risks like this when we were young. Most of the time it works out and nothing bad happens, but it's a game of Russian roulette and sometimes the bullet strikes. Think of Natalie Holloway. She took a risk and ended up in the hands of a monster. Jay Slater gambled as well, and he lost, leaving his family completely devastated. Jay's mother, Debbie Duncan, has said she was told that the remains of her son had been found through a translator, and when she heard the words, she just screamed. This was, after all, her beautiful boy, whose final words to her were, I love you, mother. Some people who attended the same NRG rave as Jay said there were, quote, dark vibes around. And the energy at the rave was so wrong. It sounds like these young ravers are preyed upon by the dealers who want to sell as much of their goods as possible. Safety be damned. By the way, NRG stands for both New Rave Generation and also for the B-class party drug, Nafarone or NRG1. FYI, this is a white powder that you either snort or swallow in wraps of paper, and it gives its takers feelings of euphoria, talkativeness, and alertness. I wonder if Jay maybe took this drug And could it explain why he decided not to sleep at the remote Airbnb in Moscow and also to cut through the rural Detenio Park where he died? Was he so alert that he couldn't sleep? Did he experience euphoria, a euphoria that made a multi-hour long hike seem like a fun trot through the forest. I mean, according to his friend, Brad Hargreaves, Jay was sort of laughing when he last spoke to him. Could this explain why Jay thought it was possible to undertake this hike without water and without a fully charged phone? I mean, I've taken pain medications that were prescribed after surgery that left me feeling euphoric and feeling like I could take on the world. I could start 
any new business and be incredibly successful. You know, success was guaranteed with that state of mind that I had from the medication. And if Jay did take such a drug, did the drug maybe start to wear off at some point during the hike? Maybe round about the time he called his friend Lucy to say that he was thirsty, he was cut and bleeding, he was lost, and his cell phone was down to 1%. Now this reporter who went to the NRG actually went to the NRG festival in Ibiza, and he made it clear that for many rave goers, the music and drugs go hand in hand. I'm thinking Jay's mother, Debbie Duncan, who paid for his hotel in Tenerife, wasn't aware of the drug connection. She said Jay told her everything, but I doubt he shared that he was maybe planning to experiment with drugs. Allegedly, we don't know yet, but we have seen photos of Jay looking completely out of it. And we did hear from a bartender who gave him a glass of water that he looked really unwell on Sunday night. If I had to guess and say, was he on drugs or was he not on drugs? I would definitely guess that he was on drugs. Now, according to this reporter, he, the reporter, was offered one substance that the dealer acknowledged can be risky. The dealer also pressured the reporter and his friends to carry on the party after the rave with people that they just met. Take a listen to what this reporter said. A group called NRG Raves. Now this is the same group that hosted the three-day festival in Tenerife that Jay Slater went to just before he went missing. When we were in there, within half an hour, we were already being pressured into buying drugs, taking drugs, pressured into leaving with strangers after the event to go on to other events. Um, and that's what we imagine happened at the event in Tenerife. Jay, we know he left with two people. He didn't know, he had, he'd met them at the NRG festival, went back to them to, with them to a remote Airbnb and then suddenly vanished. But it was clear from the ravers at the event we went to, hosted by the same group, um, it didn't matter, they were there to have a good time. They were all, a lot of them, most of them were also taking drugs. They were talking about different drugs they were taking, different combinations they were taking. They were all there to have a good time, whatever the cost. We were also offered a new super strength Snapchat pill, as well as uh, other drugs like Coke uh, and ketamine. We had uh, various people come up to us by themselves, didn't know where their friends were, asking us if they could buy any drugs of us or if we knew anyone who was selling drugs themselves. So it was clear everyone wanted to get on it um, and a lot was being uh, sold and promoted that night. I'm thinking that just as these ravers travel from one NRG festival in one country to another NRG festival in another country or location, so too do the drug dealers. I'm convinced Ayub Kassam despite him saying otherwise, was in Tenerife to deal drugs. Allegedly, if it looks like a duck and it quacks like a duck, then it's probably a duck. We know he was involved in the drug trade previously, so it seems logical to assume he's probably still doing this because he did say he's not into that kind of music. He admitted that he wasn't there for the music. I mean, what else could explain the meeting between Jay Slater and Ayub? Yes, I know there's a possible Lucy connection, but I still believe 30-something Ayub hanging out with 19-year-old Jay Slater was more of a business deal. According to this reporter, he said that ravers told him that the heavy bass music was made for people to take drugs with and that they would have a good time no matter what. And the ravers put Jay's disappearance down to him either being in the wrong crowd or not being able to handle the drugs he may have taken. The reporter pointed out that even though there was security to get into the venue, it was only a light bag search and clearly drug dealers got in because they were continually coming up to the reporter and his friends with their wares. So it sounds like maybe the NRG festival and or some of its employees allegedly make deals with the dealers 
allowing them entrance, perhaps in exchange for a cut of the money. The reporter described a very pushy dealer saying to him, quote, you're not taking anything? Nah, we need to fix that. You can't come to an event like this and listen to this music and not get on it. What do you want? Pills? Coke? I'll sort you out. I'll look after you. Anything you want. The dealer then insisted that MDMA, otherwise known as ecstasy, was perfect for the night. The dealer also said that the after parties are where it's at. I'm assuming Jay Slater's remains would have been subjected to toxicology tests if the remains were in a condition that allowed for that. And I know it can take months to get those reports back. If the reports show that certain illicit substances were in Jay Slater's system, could those who provided the drugs be charged? I can't help but think of actor Matthew Perry's death. Perry died from an accidental overdose of ketamine. Five people have been charged in connection with his death, including his personal assistant and one of the people accused of providing the drug. Is this why A.U. Kasim and his friend Rocky quickly scrambled to fly out of Tenerife right after Jay went missing? Let's not forget, Kasim booked the Airbnb under a false name. Did he do that because he was involved in criminal activity there and he didn't want his actual name known? It's certainly a suspicious thing to do. Jay's mother told The Sun that she would like to quiz Ayub Kasim and Rocky because she has so many questions regarding Jay's final hours before he vanished. Like us, Debbie has a hard time understanding why Jay would get into a car with two older men that he just met and go to their remote Airbnb. Debbie said she's tormented over why Jay traveled almost an hour in a car to the remote village of Mosca. Debbie told the son Jay could have left the Airbnb fearing for his safety the next morning. And she bases this on the fact that normally Jay would never let his phone run out of a charge. She said, quote, why did he leave there without charging his phone? He would always charge his phone. There are so many questions. I don't know what he thought he was doing by going with these two guys. I really don't know. I can't get my head around why he just didn't go back to his own friends and went with them. In our minds, we think he's not realized where he was going. And it was dark. I just think he's not even thought about or knew which direction he was going. I don't know why they interviewed and let them go. I don't know on what day they interviewed them. I would like to speak to them, probably in time. I would ask what was happening in Jay's mind and why did he leave? End quote. And we all know that Ayub said, that he couldn't tell anybody what was in Jay's mind because he didn't know what he was thinking. But I also think that Ayub wasn't telling the full story and he didn't want to admit, maybe, allegedly, to any drug involvement. Now I want to read you an excerpt from the Sun article. Jay Slater's devastated mom has told how she is haunted by videos of her son raving the night before he vanished. The clips, which she has seen since his tragic death, show Jay bare-chested on the dance floor of the Papagayo nightclub, swaying around. The 19-year-old went to Papagayo nightclub in Playa de las Americas in Tenerife with friends for the final night of the NRG festival on June 16th. Clips were shared on social media after Jay disappeared showing him on the crowded dance floor with music blaring in the background. One video showed Jay walking through a sea of clubbers with sunglasses propped on his head. In another, the teen could be seen with his shirt hanging around his neck, seemingly unsteady on his feet. Heartbroken mom Debbie said, the videos absolutely haunt her. She said he liked drinks including spiced rum and coke and disarono and accepts he could have taken drugs. Debbie told The Sun, quote, obviously at these events, drugs are knocking around and lots of people taking them. I don't know whether he was taking drugs that night or not, 
but I'm not going to deny that people at these events take drugs and there are drugs at those kind of resorts. Debbie, who has also considered whether Jay was spiked, added, the videos I've seen absolutely haunt me because I've never ever seen him like that before. There's a video of him kind of staggering back and he has never been in that state." End quote. I don't think it's unusual for young people to have secrets from their parents, even if they're extremely close to their parents. I say this based on my own experience. I was very close to both of my parents, but I certainly didn't tell them everything. And I'm pretty sure they didn't tell me everything either. Bottom line with Jay Slater, I believe that drugs played a role in his death. And it will be interesting to see what the toxicology reports say. Now, if you enjoyed this video, if you learned something from it, if you appreciate my efforts, please consider a donation to the channel because I cannot monetize this particular video because I called all the drugs by their actual names and YouTube is not going to endorse that. I'll see you next time on Bed Crime Stories. Jay would not let his phone run down. If he had access to a phone charger, that would be the first thing that he would do. So that made me think, well, why did he not, why did he not want to be there? Why did he not want to hang about to charge his phone? If he looked at his battery and it were obviously less than 10%, 5%, whatever, that just goes through my mind like and like his friends like back here have said like why did he not charge his phone one of these guys had said he'd given him a charger but why did he not why did he not charge his phone have, have you spoken to either of them at all? no i don't know whether he tried to contact us or not but like i say my phone never stopped never stopped ringing and I just didn't answer it half the time, so maybe maybe they did. Would you like to speak to them and ask them any questions? Probably in time, yeah. And what, what would you ask them if they were sitting in front of you now? Just, you know, and what, what we're going through, you know, why, why he went with them, what we're going through, in their opinion, what would be going through Jay's mind. I mean, I... I seen something that you know he was saying he wanted to come with us, but I just I don't know. I can't get my head round why he just didn't go back to his own friends, you know. There's not very many times that I can think where Jay's not been contactable, and if he's not. He'll ring me. That's I've got half of his friends' numbers in my phone because he's rung me. And, Mum, it's me. I'm on such a body's phone. So I'll, that right. Well, I'll save. I'll save his number then. Just that. Just that. Why? You know. Why did he not charge his phone? Why did he walk that way, and not that way? And when you're up there. And you're looking down and you can see civilization, buildings, traffic, it's a tourist place. There were a bus stop at the end of the street, there were a bus stop further down. I just can't comprehend, you know, I just can't get into my head why he would have gone the total opposite way instead of going down to civilization why you would go up the other way i just can't get my head round round that bit it's <laughs> in the middle of nowhere middle of mountains in our minds as a, as a you know family friends he's not realized where, where we were going and it were dark you know it was still dark i just think he's not not even thought about or if he even knew in which direction he were going, where he were going to.